So it's no secret that people are leaving California, especially the Los Angeles and the Bay Area. And in general, they're heading east. And maybe you've made that decision or are considering it and have your eye on a few states that might have caught your interest as possible home. And so in this video, I'm going to make the case for moving to South Carolina. Specifically, we're going to dive into the Midlands of South Carolina, the Lexington, Columbia and Lake Murray areas. We're going to look at the cost of living, the quality of life, housing affordability, lack of traffic and all the other reasons that South Carolina has truly become a hot spot for people exiting California and truthfully many other states as well. Plus, stay to the end of this video and I'll get you my relocation guide. It's going to show you all the hot spots of our city, the need to know things like where the hospital are, as well as reiterate all the reasons for reasons people are moving to South Carolina, especially Lexington, Columbia and the Lake Murray area. So why would you leave California and move to South Carolina? I don't know, but obviously it must be on your mind if you clicked on this video though. I'm gonna personally tell you a few of the reasons why my wife and I actually decided to leave California back in 2015 and move to South Carolina. So if I'm being 100% honest, my wife was the initial one that had to convince me. I mean, I was not considering leaving Southern California. I was born and raised SoCal and did not consider anywhere else. You almost sold that California is as good as it gets, right? Maybe some of you feel the same way. But we talked about the cost of living. We talked about housing affordability. We talked about the cost of raising a family and how much more affordable it is in other states especially South Carolina. But let's discuss some of the reasons that people are leaving, where they're going, and how we can get them to possibly end up here in the Midlands of South Carolina. Now, when we decided to move to South Carolina, we were met with the same questions too. How could you leave California and come out to South Carolina? It's like this place is nothing like Southern California. And it's like, well, yeah, of course it's not. That's what we did. But also I have to be honest with myself and living in California at the time. It's a great place to be if you're a millionaire, you live on the beach and you have that nice lifestyle, just rolling out, going surfing. But that wasn't us, right? And that's not most of us. A lot of people believe that's how we all lived our life. But for the most of us, we were living inland, battling traffic every day to get to and from work. And I know everybody thinks that we spend so much time at the beach, surfing, skating Venice. At least that's what Hollywood and even the videos apparently in Hollister told them, right? But we go to the beach honestly just as much here in South Carolina as we did in California. Yeah, it's a little bit further from the Midlands where we are, but at least you're not sitting in traffic for two hours trying to get back home. Either way, we could afford a home even if we stopped eating avocados and drinking my Starbucks that I literally drank zero days out of the year. But either way, it didn't matter how we math it out or what guru I followed. We were essentially broke in California terms. And maybe you feel this way too. You just can't get ahead as well. I'm not dating, I'm married now. So the club scene, the quick trips to Vegas, the nightlife scene, after a while it was like, seriously, what is the point of living in California? The weather, the this, like we'll get into weather and all those things, trust me. But either way, we began the quest of exploring different areas. Maybe places you have considered, Texas, which is quickly turning into California 2.0, Florida, hurricanes, right? North Carolina, well, more expensive. Some of the areas, honestly, we looked at are almost the same cost as homes in California. For us, obviously, if you haven't caught, beaches and the weather were critical. If you didn't catch the trends or the lack of Tennessee, but ultimately we landed right here in the Midlands of South Carolina. One of the first things we noticed moving to the Midlands of South Carolina is just the ease of living here. I mean, it's one of those main factors and you don't realize it till you get here, but you're paying a fraction of the taxes that you're paying in California. The cost of living is much more affordable, to be honest, and we'll get into this a little bit, cost of living. Our mortgage on our first house here was cheaper than our rent was in California. True story. But either way, it's a fraction of what you're doing in Southern California. As well as, I remember my first day at my job here in South Carolina. I had to travel down the interstate at about 7.30. I was worried how long it would take to drive. And there was zero traffic. I mean, zero. There, I never slowed down, I never stopped, just going the speed limit, maybe a little bit above, all the way down the interstate. I mean, it's definitely grown a lot since then, but I mean, literally, 
I drive around all day for work now, and I couldn't imagine trying to do the same thing in Southern California. I would get half as much work done because of how long it took to get places. Now granted, you'll see locals will complain about traffic. You've probably seen it on Facebook groups if you join some of them. But those of us from California and even the New Yorkers laugh at what they call traffic here. Now, before we dive into all the different reasons and compare them, as someone, as like I said, relocated here back in 2015, I know how challenging it is to try and go at this alone. You're looking at homes online, watching videos like these, and trying to find that best home for you and your family. Well, my team and I have literally been helping people from all over the country. So feel free to give us a call or shoot us a message on our website. That way you don't have to go at it alone. Now let's start with cost of living, the big one for a lot of people. So I researched a lot of resources. So it wasn't just hearsay me saying this, but looking at stats, and then we'll talk about some actual perspective and numbers. So Columbia's housing expenses are considered 26% lower than the national average. Utility prices are 34% higher than the national average. Transportation expenses like bus fares and gas prices are 23% lower than the national average. Now to be 100% honest, I'm not sold on this utility thing either. I mean, our electric and gas bills are cheaper here than they were in California. We quickly found out, like of course being from California, solar panels, right? Solar panels just do not make sense here. Sewer was the only utility thing that was different for us because where we live, and I know this isn't the same across everywhere, but where we lived, that was included in your taxes. And so that was new to us paying sewer. But either way, going back, Los Angeles housing expenses are considered 140% higher than the national average. And the utility prices are 11% higher than the national average. Transportation expenses like bus fares and gas prices are 28% higher than the national average. Gas, yeah, seriously, right? California literally has the highest gas tax in the entire country, no joke. And we are ranked 36 with only 14 states with a lower gas tax than us. Now, going backwards, one thing, interesting enough, it's funny, you'll hear people talk about car insurance, vehicle insurance here being higher because a lot of these things, you, let me, let me finish my story. So we called the insurance guy out here to set up our vehicle insurance. And he's like, hey, I hate to give you a heads up, but we have high vehicle insurance out here in South Carolina. We're like, all right, hit us with it. And then he runs the number and he comes back. He's like, actually, I take that back. You're saving money from your California California rate. So a lot of these things perspective wise coming from California that people are like, oh, it's so expensive here. You're going to be surprised that for you, it's not. Another one, I talk about this a lot in my videos is that we pay property taxes here on our vehicles every single year. And so when you renew at the DMV, it's a cheap DMV fee. And then you got to pay these property taxes to your local county. But either way, obviously coming from California, people are like, oh, with these property taxes, I'm like, well, my DMV fees were more for most of my vehicles that I remember then my property tax on my vehicle here so that saved us money as well so you'll hear a lot of things online about these costs of things but perspective wise that's kind of the cool thing coming from California is it's like most of these things you're pretty much saving on I don't know if there's one thing like I said outside the sewer which is not across the board that we're paying more for here than others now this is a benefit of being in the Midlands because when we talk about homeowners insurance that is one thing as you get towards the coast they have a lot more floodplains, hurricane insurance, things like that. We're here in the Midlands. Ours is not that bad. We really don't have floodplains out here. There's a very small area, but most people I help buy have avoided. I don't think I've any had anyone buy in actual floodplain. So we save pretty significantly here on our property insurance. Either way, that's kind of personal dealing with this cost of living thing. But let me dive a little bit further because we're gonna talk about grocery prices as well. And they're considered 2% higher than the national average here. Now, Los Angeles is considered 11% higher than the national average. So still saving on that accord. Healthcare in Columbia is 13% lower than the national average and healthcare in Los Angeles is 12% higher than the national average. And there's also this awesome site, it's called payscale.com that can direct compare how much money you need to make when moving. So I picked Lexington. It does cost a little bit more, but let's just be honest, just like living in the city, most people aren't living in Los Angeles, right? They're living in the suburbs. Same here. Most people aren't living in downtown Columbia. They're living in the suburbs around it. But we're going to direct compare to Los Angeles because as you know, Los Angeles County encompasses a lot of these suburbs. So what it says, and I'm going to break this down 
the different areas throughout the state because I know not all of you are in LA. So in the Los Angeles general area, if you make $100,000 here, you would have to essentially make 64,492. If you're in San Diego, 100,000, you have to make 67,555. San Jose, if you make 100,000, you only gotta make 65,154 here. So pretty neat because people always talk about, well, the pay out there, and we'll talk about jobs and the economy in a little bit, pay out there and things like that's gonna make less. Well, the good thing is your money goes a lot further. So even if you're taking a slight pay cut, you will still be ahead based on these numbers here. Now, granted, it, that all depends. And again, I'll dive into economy a little bit more, but I wanna touch on this why we're here. Really depends on your job. I, my first job before obviously getting into real estate here, I was an EMT. I actually, to be honest, made more here than I did back in California. So it was a leg up for us. Now, again, we'll dive into more of this a little bit later when we talk about the economy, but let's continue on on the cost of living. So let's talk childcare. So childcare, according to Move. Org. And then I'm gonna give you numbers again. California is ranked number six most expensive at 13,876 annually for childcare, utilizing what is considered 21.1% of the median income in the area. South Carolina is 46 most expensive. Again, as you read these numbers will make sense, but one is the most expensive. So 50 is not the highest, but either way, annually 6,507, which is taking up 12.5% of the median income. Now here's some real numbers to give an idea because obviously it's like, well, what does that equate to? So for instance, we paid about $200 a month for four days a week, half day preschool for our kids. I went to the preschool that I went to as a kid growing up, still there. I looked at it and it's current half day, only three days a week is at $557 a month. So as you can see, those costs alone. Now I will say getting into full-time childcare is what I've been told is always the hard part here in SC as many are booked up. Now we have the benefit that my wife works from home, so they stay with her when they are not in school. But I have had clients that said, many had wait lists. So if you are deciding to move to the area and you got a little bit of time, I would start calling ahead and maybe trying to get on these wait lists. I've had clients do that. So that time, by the time they show up and they need childcare, it's there. It has gotten a little bit better over the time, but again, I do know recently I've had some people that have struggled with this. But let's talk about, before we dive into more about comparing the two, where are people moving to from LA and where are people moving to to come to South Carolina? See how Los Angeles and some of the other areas rank. So Redfin has this cool tracker where you can kind of see where people are going and people are coming from. So let's start with who's coming to South Carolina and this is diving into states. So you have New York, Washington DC, Charlotte, and number four is the Los Angeles. California area. Now, where are most people going that are leaving LA specifically? Now, this is people leaving out of state because obviously you have people in LA that are going to San Diego and all these other places, but we're talking about specifically leaving the state for those of you that are like, nope, we're done with the entire state, we're done. So this is in order, Las Vegas, Nashville, Dallas, Phoenix, Houston, Portland, Boise. So outside of Houston, I have a question. Do none of you care about the beaches? I mean, sure, not far outside of Portland, it has beaches, but they're cold, like you're not going in the water. Either way, we still have beaches. Weather and beaches were honestly one of the mine must has for us. It is one of the main driving factors we literally chose South Carolina. And again, we'll talk about weather and natural disasters in a bit, but that's kind of the statistics of where people are going, where they're coming from. So we're getting a lot from California, but people leaving are not necessarily going here. And that's kind of why I want to share this information because interesting enough, going backwards, Again, we moved here in 2015. When we moved here, most people relocating were coming from up north. It wasn't a big relocation area though. A lot more people were moving to Charleston, Florida, kind of these warm areas to retire. Well, obviously, as many of you know, the pandemic kind of changed that dynamic. And again, we'll talk about this in the economy more, but work from home and things like that. And all of a sudden these people were like, we're done with these states, we're moving out. And so we saw a lot of influx from other states. And I've seen more and more coming from California, as you see, within the numbers. Big thing I've noticed though is California, we were kind of one of the later ones for them to find out about us, right? It was in that first year, I didn't hear from a lot of people from California, but then it really started to pick up and more and more people have reached out from California, different. I've had people from San Diego, from the Los Angeles area, all the way up to, like I said, the Bay Area reaching out saying, 
hey, we are considering the area. And so that's why I say it's become more and more popular and why I wanted to make this video. Now, let's talk about traffic, right? Nothing like stop and go in California. Yes, over the years, traffic has gotten worse since we moved here, simply because, again, more people are moving here. And why a lot of local people will complain, like I said, you may have seen some of this stuff on forums. Coming from California, it's gonna be laughable at what they consider as traffic. I mean, to us, it's a true rush hour here. And to be honest, they seem to be doing a lot to fix the roads. Again, a lot of people complain locally on Facebook that nothing's been done. But I've seen a ton of the interstates widen since we've been here. And every time we have friends visit from California, they say it's funny. People on the roads just don't just seem to be as much in a hurry here as well. There's rush, rush traffic of people cutting you off anywhere. Like when you come to these four-way stops, it's not a race to see who can go first. Now, I will say, watch out for cars with Georgia plates. They seem to, for some reason, always be in a hurry. Now let's talk taxes and the economy. So I'm here in Lexington. It's a suburb about 15, 20 minutes outside of Columbia and near the popular Lake Murray. We're gonna compare to that specifically. So Los Angeles unemployment rate, again, because what their stats are pulling Los Angeles County. And as you know, and I know, Los Angeles County spreads out to these suburbs that we're all living in. The town I grew up in was a suburb of Los Angeles. So their overall unemployment rate is 10.6%. We're Lexington here unemployment rate is 3.7%. Now, I will say LA does have more diversity when it comes to job types. I will give them that, especially in Northern California, a lot of diverse jobs. But as more people work from home, I know this has become less and less of an issue. I have a ton of people that got to retain their jobs and now live here. Let's talk sales tax. LA, 9.5%. Here, 7%. Income tax, LA average, 9.3%. Income tax, Lexington average, 7%. Property tax, California, 0.82%. Lexington, 0.61%. Overall less, but we haven't even gotten into home price because obviously that impacts those property taxes. We could truly have identical property taxes, but because you're saving a significant on the actual cost of the house, your property taxes will be that much less. Now, before we dive into that, have you ever been to South Carolina? I often get people that have either vacation in Myrtle Beach, Hilton Head, Kiowa Island, or others that went to basic training out here at Fort Jackson, right here in Columbia. Let me know in the comments where you visited or where you've been. Now, before we go on, what do we not have, right? I can't entirely rag on California. It raised me, it made me who I am. But in the Midlands, we have no mountains. But the Smoky Mountains are only a couple hours from us, just outside of Greenville, heading up towards Asheville, towards Tennessee. What you will notice though right away here though is trees. Now I know my NorCal people have trees, been up there plenty of times, have family up there. But from SoCal, the first time I know my parents came to visit, they said my brand new neighborhood, we had bought in a brand new construction neighborhood, looked established compared to California because it was surrounded by all these massive pines and trees versus a lot of those homes in Southern California, you know, when they start the neighborhood, it's just barren. There's nothing around it in the middle of what feels like a desert. As well, we have tons of water, including rivers and lakes. Right here again in Lexington, Lake Murray. It's a 50,000 acre lake with 650 miles of shoreline and homes right there on the water offering you a dock to head out boating. If you wanna learn more about it, I've made an entire video series about the lake, but I have literally helped people retiring in California find their dream lake home right here on Lake Murray. And all I had to do was trade in their 20 year old track home to get it. That's right, let's talk housing affordability. So Los Angeles County, the median home sold price was just under a million at 999,000. Where I grew up, San Clarita, since my Cali people know what that means, right? Right there at Magic Mountain, it's closer to 750K. Columbia's is 270K. Now to be fair, because I have compared a lot to Lexington and it is a little bit higher at 305,000. At the same time, I pulled Los Angeles numbers. So less than half of the town I grew up in and a third of Los Angeles overall. Literally lake homes near town, not the rural ones out in the country where all you see is the Dollar General, over the last six months sold at an average right around a million. And those that are looking rural on the lake that are okay being a little bit further from downtowns came in an average of 760,000. The same cost as your average homes in California 
you can be on a lake home. Crazy, right? Again, that was one of the biggest driving factors for us. But let's dive into weather because looking at the list of the areas you're all considering, you apparently love either the high heat in the desert or snow up north. I, I don't get it, the extreme. But let's talk here because my wife was doing neither of those extremes and maybe you're the same way. You're looking for something similar because I know I was sold most of my life that the weather was perfect in California. And to us was relative to where we were in Southern California. Now it is a bit colder in the winter and humid versus the dry heat. I always compare in California, it's like opening the oven when it's running. And in South Carolina, it's like opening up the dryer when it's running. As well, we'll get to natural disasters in a bit and rain because those are where things do change. But either way, let's talk about this. So for reference, again, we were in San Santa Clarita, California, which is about 30 miles northwest of Los Angeles. Cali, we were 1,207 above sea level in what was considered the high desert. Here we are 394 feet above sea level in an area considered the fall line between the coastal plains and the Piedmont region. I said fall line, not fault line, but we'll talk about earthquakes in a bit. From my perspective, I will say we have more nights in South Carolina that just don't seem to cool down as much in the summer. But the summers in Cali, I remember high temperatures average higher than here. I was a lifeguard and I would remember burning my feet off on the ground there. But so either way, let's talk actual stats versus just what I feel. In the summer in SE, we have an average high of 85. Now our hottest month is July at 92 of a high and a low is 73. That's the average hottest month. Cali has an 88 average high in the summer, so a little higher with being the hottest at 94 and a low of 65. So I guess my perspective was right with the higher highs in Cali and the higher nighttime lows in SC. But either way, let's talk about winter. So the average high temp here in the Midlands of South Carolina in the winter is below 63 degrees, with the coldest being January, with 56 highs and 37 lows. Cali in the winter, where I was, the winter average is below 68 and the coldest high average is 63 and a low of 45. So they're close, somewhat relative. And interesting, their records are actually comparable. Santa Clarita record, high was 112 degrees and a low of zero degrees, where our record in Colombia has a high of 113 and a low of negative one. So almost identical when it came to that. Now, one thing, it does rain a lot more here. Now, granted, some days are just thunderstorms that just seem to roll through, but other times it's like the rain just doesn't want to end. Statistically, they say we have an average of 46 inches of rain, which is above the national average of 38 inches per year. Now, statistically, Cali has a lot of variances from year to year. You know, you have those drought years, you have those flash flood and mudslides year, as you know, but tracking their rainy season is what I could find on some of these stats. They say values range from a low of 10.75 inches in 1924 to a high of 42.82 inches in 1983, year I was born, with an average of 23.5 inches over the entire peer record. So your highest that you guys have seen is right around our average. So it does rain a lot here. Snow, right here in the Midlands, we see less than an inch of year. So it's not something we deal with right here in the Midlands. Relative to what I remember back being in Santa Clarita, right? Every year you might get this like chance and everyone's like, ooh, it's gonna snow, right? And maybe some flurries, but they never stick. And since we've been here now eight years, I saw it stick once. And I remember that growing up. I remember one year where it stuck, we got like an inch or two and then it was gone the next day, right? Very similar to here when it comes to the snow. Obviously looking at that list of where y'all are moving, some of you want to apparently go shovel snow. We didn't, again, my wife was like, nope, we're not doing the snow thing. So either way, we don't deal with that. But let's talk natural disasters because obviously that's one of the biggest fears I hear people being concerned about when it comes to moving to the east. So Cali, as you know, you got earthquakes, fires, floods, landslide, and apparently hurricanes too, right? Who knew? We're gonna dive into that. South Carolina, we got hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and maybe earthquakes. That's right, buckle your seatbelt. So if you're coming from California, I don't need to explain your natural disasters. We justified that we both lived through major earthquakes, 94 being the worst that we lived through. And in California, the biggest thing with earthquakes, as you know, is they do not give you a warning, right? 
at least here with hurricanes, you usually get a multi-day warning. Same with tornado. There's usually a warning that, hey, tomorrow there's gonna be a chance for tornadoes. And then typically you get this alert on your phone saying, hey, tornadoes can be in the area, right? Now they are more unpredictable though. That's what's kind of crazy about them. But either way, I know in Cali, we saw the fires on the hills surround us every year. And unfortunately we watched houses burn. We live thankfully inland enough that all we dealt with was the smoke. It's funny where we talk about the smoke from the fires pollen here during the spring you'll walk outside i remember the first time it was like is there ash on my car is there a fire no it's just the pollen it, it's crazy but you'll know that the first time you come out here during the spring and spring hits you'll know what i mean but either way what are the stats here for tornadoes and hurricanes? Because that is always on everyone's mind. It's one of the big things I talk to people about that they're freaked out about. So tornadoes, according to scemd.org, South Carolina has averaged 11 tornadoes each year since 1950, resulting in 47 fatalities, 1,057 injuries. Now this is statewide. South Carolina ranks 26th in the United States in the number of tornado strikes and 18th in the number of tornadoes per square mile. The most common type of tornado we see is a relatively weak and short-lived type. Typically occurs between March and May, but tornadoes can occur almost anywhere, anytime. And we, we've personally seen some in the winter time as well. It's kind of crazy when it comes to the weather. I dove in this more in another video. We get this kind of wild, ADD weather where one day it's like 70 degrees in the winter and the next day it's 30 degrees. In those 70 degree, you get these thunderstorms that roll through in the middle. It's crazy, right? But either way, just going back to that, Texas, Florida, and Tennessee, which I know we're on some of y'all's list, both rank higher than us. So if you're afraid of it, I'm just telling you, those you should probably look at that. But I told you I was gonna fight my case, so I had to. <laughs> But either way, perspective, we've been here eight years and every year our phone alerts us or tornado warnings. First year I was like, what do I do about this? My coworker grew up in the Midwest and he's like, do you see a tornado? I was like, no, he's like, well then nothing, we're good. And I was like, okay. So either way, knock on wood, thankfully, where we are here, we haven't had any that have touched down here locally since we've been here. Now, just about an hour east of us around Orangeburg, there have been multiple that have touched down in the more rural areas is where we typically see them. We went actually with our office and volunteered to help out in recovery. And we saw a lot of mobile homes that were knocked off their axes, had a lot of damage. Stick built houses outside of like trees falling down were relatively minor. You might lose some shingles and things like that, but the structure of the house were relatively minor. Now, the roads were bad, like I talked about with the houses, the trees. So don't try and drive on them because oftentimes when these fatality reports come on, tree falling on cars are often what relate to a lot of these deaths. But I know I've had clients that have moved here and they freaked out and texted me every time the tornado warning goes off. And again, I get it when I was like, I don't know, like go in your bathroom, I guess is what they say, the middle part, hide under your staircase. But either way, hurricanes, because obviously that's the other thing people bring up. So according to dnr.sc.gov, from 1851 to 2021, 44 tropical cyclones have made landfall along the South Carolina coastline. Of these 44 systems that have directly hit the coast, only four made landfall as major category three hurricanes the 1893 Sea Island Hurricane, Hurricane Hazel, Hurricane Gracie, and Hurricane Hugo. There are no category five hurricane landfalls on record for the state of South Carolina. I know this is another one people from Cali tell me they want no part of. And I'm glad now that some of you in Southern California now have perspective about this because Cali, from what I recall, got their first hurricane turned tropical storm that hit. All my friends were telling me it was nothing, it was blown out of proportion by the news, and we're like, yes, we are aware, this is what we've been telling you every time you text us, if we are okay when a tropical storm passes through, right? Really not that bad when it turns to a tropical storm. We've honestly had thunderstorms roll through that had these straight lines winds that were worse than some of the hurricanes we've personally seen since living here. Now, I will say with that, local people will talk about Hurricane Hugo. That was the last one came straight into and did a lot of damage. Again, our perspective, going back to California, 94 earthquake, okay, based on timing, it seems like they're getting bad hurricanes about as much as we got bad earthquakes in California. Our perspective was at least we got a heads up here. We could prepare for it. If we had to move up towards the other area, we could, where with earthquakes, as you recall, all of a sudden the floor just starts shaking below you. Now, 
With that said, earthquakes, surprisingly enough, there is a fault line in South Carolina. The biggest earthquake was back in the late 1800s in Charleston, measuring 7.3 estimated. Back then, they estimated by the damages around. They didn't have the little seismograph things that we always see on the news. Now, before you start crossing FC off the list after I say that, According to the U.S. Geological Survey's Earthquake Information Center, every state in the U.S. has experienced an earthquake of one kind or another. Y'all remember science class with the plates. Sorry, hate to do that to you, but to compare, to give you an idea, you can run the numbers and see California has significantly more and stronger at that. The top states for earthquake are number one, Alaska, number two, California, Hawaii, Nevada, and Washington. South Carolina doesn't even make the top 10. But let me give an idea of what that means. Between that big one I talked about in Charleston and when they started actually being able to measure earthquakes, they said there's been a handful of earthquakes, but none that did any significant damage. And so when they estimated, it, they looked at the biggest ones to be right around four over the years. Now that they have the ability to measure, which has been for quite some time, this will break it down into numbers for you. The highest recorded was a 4.4 near Seabrook Island, down near the coast, which they say earthquakes in the four here are very rare, having only one more in the recorded time period, reaching 4.1. Outside of that, they do say we get rare mile trenders from time to time, measuring no more than 3.6, but typically less than 2.5. So as you can see, it's a thing here, but perspective-wise from California, you may not realize it. I remember the biggest one we had since we were here. I was at the office with some clients. We're sitting down talking and it felt like a semi-truck drove by the front of our office. The little roof shingle panels things kind of shuddered a little bit. And one of my coworkers comes running down the hallway and they're like, it was an earthquake. And I was like, there was, right? Because from my perspective, like an earthquake are those threes and fours where you're like, oh, we're having an earthquake. Not this little shimmy that randomly seems to happen. But either way, we're not done yet. I intentionally saved one for last, but as a bonus, I want to throw in one of the big reasons we absolutely fell in love with South Carolina, and it's Southern hospitality. This isn't something that I can bring up stats or graphs to show you what that's about. I can't really explain it into words. You have to experience it for yourself. And the moment you land at the airport, go to the grocery store, go to the restaurant, you'll notice how much friendlier people are around here. One of the first thing our friends from California that visit tell us is how much nicer people are. They're like people just seem so much nicer and friendly here. I mean, we personally hate when we have to go back to Cali especially going through LAX, like the people at the car rental places, everyone at the airport just seems so rude to deal with compared to what we're dealing with out here. Now it does create this slower pace of life. I've made some other videos, I hope you watch them because as I'm sitting here like selling South Carolina, there are some things that are different that you have to get used to. And so I hope you watch those videos because I have had people from California that come out here and they're like, I don't like it. Things like, you know, neighborhoods in California California had like sidewalks on both sides of the street and all these exotic like different things in the neighborhood where we don't have as much of that out here. It's starting to become more of a thing, but it wasn't. So again, make sure you keep watching and watch some of those other videos to see, because like I said, it's a great place. We enjoy it here. We've been here for eight years and have no intents on leaving, but I know it's not for everybody. Again, I've had clients from California come out here, plenty that I bought, but had some that of course were like, this is not for us. They they want essentially, and it's hard with relocation, I deal with, this isn't just a California thing, I deal with in other states as well. They're hoping that basically where they live, they just wanna pick up and put right here in South Carolina, and it's not that way, right? Your prices are the way they are because of a lot of the conveniences and things you have around there. So some of that stuff just may not be here. Those abilities to just live in that neighborhood where you can walk to the ice cream shop, having the Apple store right there, having everything within such proximity all those perks that you have there, we may not have here. And so you have to understand, and we understood, we were leaving California intentionally. My job didn't take me here, my wife's job, we were like, we are done with California, we're moving. So we were looking for different. So when you move here, understand it's going to be different from where you are. Some of the things you see there, you're not gonna see here. Again, that's what we were looking for. We were looking for a change. And so 
while it is a great state and there's plenty of positives in here, there are things that are different than where you're coming from. And that's one of the reasons I saved this one thing for last politics because well if you go back through some of my other videos where i brought politics up the comments speak for themselves but i have to be honest one of the reasons a lot of people are coming to south carolina is because it's a red state overall many of you have told me that or alluded to it eventually now not all of you and we'll dive into this more but let me run some stats so you can understand so in 2020 trump won 55.11 percent with 1,385 votes to Biden at 43% at 1,091 votes with 36,000 going to independent, green or other. To give you an idea, because obviously has people relocating here impacted us, you all know what happened to Texas, right? 2016, Trump won 54.9% with 1.155 million to Hillary at 40% with 855,000 and 121,000 going to independent, green or other. So they both gained about the same amount of votes between 2016 and 2020 and less votes for the independent so for those that are looking while like i said it is a red state we do have blue county so in 2020 about 12 counties recently voted blue including neighboring richland county fairfield and sumter and to give you an idea of the discrepancy on county lines is kind of crazy lexington was 64 percent red to 34 percent blue in 2020 Richland was 68% blue to 30% red in 2020. So mass discrepancies between the two. Charleston, to give you an idea, another hot spot in South Carolina that some of you may be looking at. In 2020, voted 55% blue to 43% red. But interesting enough, they just voted in their first Republican mayor since the 1870s. So safe to say, Californias are not Californian South Carolina. Oh, before I forget, the Relo Guide, I promise you. So if you had to relocate to SouthCarolina.com, you can get a digital copy of this guide for free. Again, it's gonna kind of reiterate some of the stuff I talked about as well. It's gonna break down the different areas and the pricing in the different suburbs that we have around here, where the local hospitals are, all the kind of stuff that a lot of people ask me on a regular basis, I gave to you guys right there for free. So head over there, relocate to SouthCarolina.com, get your copy. And again, reach out if you decide South Carolina is on your radar.